Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to uh, discuss about uh, multicast routing. Uh, we will quickly see an overview of multicast, what kind of uh, uh, you know um, requirements the multicast uh, will be useful. Then we'll see the multicast IP addressing. Then we'll check reverse path forwarding, how uh, the forwarding loop uh, is avoided uh, in a multicast uh, environment. Then we'll see uh, the multicast dense mode and sparse mode forwarding. Uh, we'll need check uh, about uh, multicast protocols like PIM and IGMP. Then finally, we will see how to configure them and how to verify them step by step. And we also see the multicast uh, troubleshooting commands. And uh, finally, we'll check uh, the auto RP configuration and its verification. So let's see the multicast uh, overview. So look at this topology and uh, in a normal network environment, uh, you have three main methods of transmitting data uh, from uh, you know uh, source to destination. You have unicast, broadcast, and multicast. So in a unicast network, the source of the traffic uh, you know needs to generate multiple set of same information when it wants to send the traffic to multiple host. So from this server, and uh, uh, you have like receivers one, two, three, and four. So all of them uh, we have to send a traffic means. The server has to send the traffic to the router, the directly connected router, and from that router you will see it has to basically generate four uh, copies of the same information uh, to each of the receiver. So it is consuming more uh, bandwidth uh, on the links when you want to send, you know, the same information, uh, you know, multiple times. So Another uh, type is the broadcast transmission. So we can easily uh, mitigate the bandwidth and resource problems in the network encountered with the unicast transmission by using a broadcast uh, transmission instead. Uh, in this instance, the source host sends a single stream of data traffic into the network addressed to all possible host. So here the drawback is, uh, let's say only the receiver one, two, three uh, wants the uh, traffic actually, but the traffic will be uh, ending up uh, to other host in the network like uh, non receivers like if they don't want to traffic also still it will receive so unnecessarily we will uh, you know send traffic and they will uh, drop the packet so using the multicast transmission we'll combine the best aspects of both unicast and broadcast uh, we get the network resource savings of broadcast uh, model while also gaining the end station uh, resources saving of the unicast model so in multicast, what happens? Uh, these receivers, whoever wants the traffic, will send a request pointing to a particular multicast group address, and uh, whoever sending that request, only those receivers will receive the traffic. So now let's see the the addressing scheme in multicast. So uh, the end station wishing to receive a multicast transmission sends a request to the network that forwards back matching a specific destination IP address to it. So this uh, multicast group address, you can say it's a similar to a, a satellite TV or a radio channel and can be requested by multiple hosts or users. The source station generates the data packet and uh, places this specific IP address called a multicast group address in the destination field of the IP address. So we have this uh, multicast range starting from uh, 224000 through 239.255.255.255. So most of us would have seen uh, multicast uh, uh, IP address this starting from 224.000/24. So this group address in this range are often referred to as a well-known address because many applications and routing protocols make use of its capabilities. Uh, let's see some of the you know more commonly uh, used uh, address uh, in this space like 224.0.0.1 represents all IP hosts on the subnet. Each router and PC connected to the physical media receives the datagram and it will uh, process the packet it received in this particular destination. And uh, you have 224.0.0.2. This is the all IP router on the subnet. Only connected routers uh, receive the packets uh, addressed to the destination. Then you have 224.0.05.6 for OSPF, .9 for IP version, RIP version 2. 
then uh, 224.00.13 that is for your uh, pim protocol protocol independent multicast so packet is sent with this destination uh, multicast ip uh, the routers uh, configured with pim uh, receive the packet address to this and uh, you have uh, 224.00.18 that is for your viral rp and uh, 224.00.22 that is for your igmp version 3 and uh, the second address block received by the ina is the 222.000/8 address space these addresses are used for uh, source specific multicast ssm which is supported in I igmp version 3 so in ssm uh, basically uh, the end station can request uh, you know uh, for a multicast group from a specific uh, source ip address um, i mean for a particular group uh, that that could be uh, chances like multiple sources sending the multicast stream um, in um, if you are using source specific multicast you have an option to request from a particular source uh, we need traffic for the particular group and finally uh, we have a address space like 239.000/8 address so these addresses are locally assigned by an administrator and are locally significant to that spe uh, specific multicast domain uh, they do not cross the boundary of the domain so you can think of these addresses are being uh, roughly equal to the rfc uh, 1918 address space that is your ipv4 private address spaces now we will see um, what is the uh, reverse path forwarding check so in a multicast forwarding uh, to avoid loop uh, we use this uh, reverse path forwarding so the basic function of a router is to uh, you know it's to examine the ip destination address and forward the data to the next stop router along the path in a multicast network this process is not effective because the destination ip address of the packet is the multicast group address from the perspective of the router the packets may have to send out multiple interfaces in fact the default behavior of a multicast router is to forward the data packet out all interfaces except the one where the packet was received this behavior has the potential of uh, forming a forwarding loop in the network so let's understand how a multicast forwarding loop can occur um, if you look at this topology we have a server there is a source that is sending the multicast stream so it goes to router 1 router 2 and uh, you know finally you have receivers uh, 2 and 3 uh, the source is connected to the uh, router r1 and uh, transmitting a data stream into the network r1 uses the default multicast forwarding mechanism described earlier right and uh, sends the traffic to r2 r2 has two neighbors uh, so it replicates the data stream and uh, uh, this data stream is basically a uh, multicast data stream so hence it follows the traffic to both of them so the traffic is not sent back to r1 because the interface connected to connecting r2 to r1 is the interface where the traffic is received at this point both r4 and r3 routers receive the multicast traffic r4 check for neighbors on its downstream interfaces where it did not uh, receive the traffic and finds that r5 and r6 r4 forwards the traffic to both of them so R3 router on the other hand has only a single downstream router in uh, uh, that is your R5 and forwards the multicast traffic to it. We now reach a critical junction in the propagation of data stream. The router uh, R5 receives two separate sets of multicast traffic, one from R3 and another from R4. Logically, we know that these data streams are in fact the same, but the router only sees the traffic as being multicast in nature. It receives one stream from R4 and uh, sends it to R3. Now R4 receives another stream from R3 and forward it to downstream to R4. So at this point we have formed a forwarding loop between R2, 3, 4 and 5. Each router continues to forward the same data stream endlessly around the network. So this is where uh, the multicast reverse path forwarding uh, comes in place. So the method by which we break this forwarding loop is called uh, a reverse path forwarding check. While each multicast packet contains the same common destination group address, it also contains a unique source IP address, that is a server IP address. This 
address is the source of the data stream and we use this information to determine whether the received multicast packet should be forwarded downstream or not. As the router receives the traffic, it examines the source IP address in IP header. A lookup is then performed in the special RPF uh, routing table for that purpose. The router is performing a simple check. If I were to reverse the path of this packet and send it back to the source, would I send it out the interface I received the packet on? Basically, it checks whether the interface where I received the, uh, the source IP is the best path to forward it back. When the result of this query affirms that the receiving interface is the best path back to the source, the router is assured that a forwarding loop is not forming and forwards the data stream out to all its downstream interfaces. Should the RPF check returns a negative result, the router breaks any potential forwarding loops and drops all multicast packets it received on that interface from the specific source. RPF uses the routing table, the normal global routing table for the check. So now let's see how reverse path forwarding, you know, uh, avoiding the loop. This is the same topology, same routers. So uh, we have uh, same multicast source, which begins to send out multicast traffic to R1. As the traffic is received in R1, R1 checks the source IP address of the packet against the RPF table. It finds that the receiving interface is in fact uh, the best path back to the source as it is directly connected to the router. R1 then forwards the multicast traffic uh, downstream to R2. Again, R2 receives the packet. It performs the RPF check. The best path back to the source is through R1. So the traffic is not forming a loop. R2 forwards the traffic downstream to both R3 and R4. The RPF check on R3 and uh, R4 finds that R2 is the best path back to the multicast source. So they also forward the multicast uh, data downstream. It was at this point in our earlier example that the forwarding loop was forming. R5 receives two copies of same uh, multicast data, one from R3 and other from R4. This time, however, uh, RPF check prevents the looping from forming. R5 compares the source address of traffic against the RPF table and uh, finds that R3 is the best path back to the source. Uh, from uh, R5, let's say you have you are running some dynamic protocol and uh, based on the metrics, uh, R5 uh, selects uh, through uh, R3, uh, we reach uh, the source. Okay, uh, let's take it. I mean, take it that way. So R5 begins to drop all uh, multicast traffic from the source as it receives on uh, the interface that is connected to R4 and informs R4 to stop sending the particular traffic data stream. Since R3 interface passes the RPF check, R, R5 forwards the traffic downstream to R4. So now the data stream received on R4 interface to R5 is checked against uh, the RPF table. So uh, we have already determined that the best path from R4 to the source is to R2. So the packets sent by the R5 are dropped from the network. R4 also instructs R5 to stop forwarding the multicast uh, data stream along that link. So in the end, no multicast traffic is sent along the link connecting uh, R4 to R5. So let's check this uh, one more time basically, uh, just to make sure we all understand this time. So the RF check prevents the loop. Uh, we'll see how it does again. So RP, this is your R5. It compares the source IP against the RPF table and finds the R3 is the best path to reach the. From R5, basically you have R3 and R4, uh, two possible uh, path to reach uh, the server. And uh, let's say based on uh, your normal uh, routing metrics, uh, whatever way it is, uh, R5 selects R3 as the best path. You know. So what happens, R5 begins to drop all multicast traffic from source it received on the interface coming from R4 because it already selected R3 is the best path. And uh, since R3 is already selected as the best path, R5 is forwarding that packet uh, to R4. Now when R4 receives that packet, R4 already determined that to reach the source for me R2 is the best path. So the packet stream that is coming from R5 to R4 by default will be discarded and R4 informs R5 that not to send any further traffic. So um, so we basically block this uh, link 
for that particular stream uh, you know gets forwarded and we in the process we stop the forwarding loop 